All right. So we have a few different things on our agenda today, which I'm just going to scribble on the board and then erase. So if you're a fast writer, you can take it on. The first thing we're doing is reviewing um, here, right? We have this little practice exercise to do. Um, review of what's the big grammar topic right now again? Reflexive verbs, right? Right. Then we're going to look at placement of reflexive pronouns. Right? Sometimes they go before, but there are a few instances when they go after the verb, right? Um, I have a listening comprehension for us to do, the one based on the wedding. Um, we have, I want to talk about the grammar construction, AL plus the infinitive, right? Um, and then congratulations, how we give congratulations in Spanish, right? Um, if we have time, we will come back to the slides regarding Mexico, but that is... Low priority. We want to get through the other things first. So depending on how fast we move, that will determine whether or not we make it back, right? Great. All right. So on the screen now, we have an exercise here and it says, change verbs according to the new, sub sorry, the new subject given. Right? So obviously when we change the verbs, since they're reflexive pronouns, we are going to have to change the reflexive pronoun, right? That is what is testing um, our ability and our knowledge of that process. Right. And also on the screen, you will see a homework assignment. Right. Since we are zooming along, we won't have time to come to the longer comprehension that I gave you the second set of vocab for. So I'm asking you to do it on your own. You'll answer in English and you'll send a picture um, to my WhatsApp number. Right. So some of you will get away because we did it in class yesterday. If you were in class yesterday and you have the notes, you wrote it down. You could send a picture. Um. And then in between, while we're doing exercises, if you finish early and you want to work on your homework in between, um, that I'm fine with that, right? Once you have contributed and answered the question in the chat and so on, right? All right, so let's get to the first one. Siempre me siento cansado al despertarme. What does that mean? Siempre, always, right? The first reflexive verb we're dealing with is sentirse, right? But then we have another reflexive verb here, despertarme, right? We're changing it to match ill, he. So instead of I am always tired when I wake up, right? It will become he is always tired when he wakes up, right? So if it's the verb, this is one verb here, right? So it will become... What will it become? It will become se siento sientes siente, right? So se siente cansado al despertar, and here it has to agree with um him again, right? Al despertar se. Cool. All right. Let's do the second one again together. Mi padre se levanta temprano. So se levanta is what has to change, right? And now instead of mi padre, it will become nosotros. Nosotros. Nosotros, my bad. Nosotros. All right, what is the pronoun for um, nosotros? Okay, good, nos, yes. And what does the verb become? Nos levantamos, very good. Temprano, right? So we wake up early. All right. Um, right. I'm going to highlight, where's my upside down question mark? It is not there. Let us put it in. All right, so for three and four, I'm going to highlight the verbs, te peinas, right? And 
nos lavamos in la cocina, right? And you are going to try. So if number three, you're changing to match ustedes. And number four, you're changing to match ustedes. I'm giving you a half a minute. You can put your answers in the chat, of course. Ready, guys? Now, if anybody is lost or confused, please say, right? So, say peinas is from peinar, say. Peinar, and then the reflexive pronoun say attached. Nos lavamos is from lavar, reflexive pronoun say attached, right? All right, so instead of te peinas, do you comb your hair in class? It becomes ustedes. Kick all right out who said this, right? Um, so that is the third person plural of the verb, correct? So, ustedes se peinan in la clase. All right, so the usted form, usted se again, third person singular, lava in la cocina. Do you wash up yourself in the kitchen? Do you bathe in the kitchen? No, right? Okay, so las chicas um, se despiden de sus padres. The girls said goodbye to their parents. Va a ponerse a la cola. Are you going to join the line? All right, what do we change that? How do we change the first one for two? And how do we change, sorry, the first one for yo? And then number five for yo, how do we change it? And how do we change um six to two? Second person singular form. Guys, the more of you, the more that you all answer, the less likely I am to create an additional homework assignment on this topic to figure out whether or not people really understand it, right? So please try and answer the questions. Otherwise, Mrs. is going to think that the class is confused about the topic, does not know the answer, except for the people who are answering, which is a small number. And that means that I have to check individually now. All right, so number five, Las chicas se despiden de sus padres. All right. Um, so let's go through five and six, and then we'll go back a little bit and just review what our pronouns are for reflexive verbs and um, remind ourselves of why we have to put in those pronouns, right? All right, so let's just get through five and six, and then we'll do that little review, and then we'll get to seven to twelve. All right, las chicas se despiden de sus padres, right? So, yo correct. Okay, so the good yo form would be me, and then I am saying goodbye. So I want the yo conjugation of this video, this video. Very good, right? All right. Va a ponerse a la cola. Are you going to join the line? So ponerse is the reflexive verb. It stays in the infinitive, right? We have two verbs together. Are you going to do something? The to do something is the infinitive form. It stays in the ER form. Right? Listen to what I'm saying. The va is what is conjugated, but that's not reflexive. Ponerse stays in the infinitive. So we don't need to change this to ponis. We say ponerte. Right, good. We just change the pronoun. So I agree. Everybody, 
clear on that? So remember in Spanish, um, when the verb is in the AR form, like mirar, or in the ER form, like poner, or in the IR form, like vivir, this is the to form in English. So to look, to put, to live. So when you find yourself saying, I am going to do something, or um, the two form of the verb, it's the infinitive, the AR, ER, IR form you're looking for, right? All right, so let's go back now and just quickly review what we did last week. And let's go back. All right, sorry. Um, there's a mistake to correct before we move on, right? We're just, we have to change the diva to vas. My bad. Right? Um, are you going to join the line? So it's vas a uh, ponerte a la cola. Yes. Correct. Thank you. All right. So yes, we're going back to our quick little review here. Right. So last week we were talking about reflexive verbs, which in English are the verbs myself, herself, um, himself, yourself, yourselves, itself, ourself, ourselves, um, themselves, oneself. All of these self and selves words that exist in English, that is what we're dealing with, right? Mm -hmm. The thing is, in English, we don't use this nearly as much as we do in Spanish, right? In Spanish, a lot of the verbs where we assume that you mean, sorry, in English, a lot of the verbs where we assume that you mean you're doing the action to yourself. Um, so we don't put in this pronoun but in Spanish you have to put it in and those are the reflexive pronouns right so what are the reflexive pronouns for the yo form it's me for the two form it stays so the el eo state form it's say nosotros is nos eos eas state is say everybody remembers this right this is not new and an example of a verb so levantar say is a reflexive verb right? Levantar means to raise, but levantar say is to raise oneself, so to get up, right? Um, yo me levanto, so we put in the extra pronoun, tu te levantas, el, ella, o usted se levanta, so we conjugate the endings as normal, but we have to put in this extra reflexive pronoun, right? For reflexive verbs in Spanish. Nos levantamos, ellos, ellas, ustedes se levanta, right? Endings are as normal. Extra pronoun is the difference, right? Right. So all we are doing with our exercise is practicing putting in the correct pronoun for the subject, right? So let's go back to the exercise. We have six more to do. All right, so no voy a lavarme ahora, right? So and we want to change this to as, so we need to change lavarme. And also we need to change um, voy, right? But voy is not reflexive in this sentence. All right. So just for quick reference, let's put the pronouns right down here. So the pronouns are yo gets me, tu gets te, um, il, ella, usted. So y'all could put the answer for seven um, in the chat. What would it become? Get se, nosotros, gets nos, and ellos, ellas, ustedes gets C and then we conjugate like we normally would otherwise, right? All right, so no eas, no van, voy vas va, vamos van, right? A lavar, so for the eas pronoun, that is, what's the eas pronoun? Eas pronoun is C. Right, no, voy, no van a lavar C.
All right, next one. No te sientes bien. And we're changing it to nosotros. So if we look down here, the nosotros pronoun is nos. So no, nos, sienten, bien. All right? A que hora te despiertas? All right. Rosario, we're dealing with Rosario. She would be ella. A que hora, so ella gets, se despierta. And we can put in her name in the sentence, right? Rosario, right? So sorry, um, no sentimos. I think I'm in a hurry to finish exercise and now I'm making mistakes. Thank you. Thank you again, Ethan. Um, no sentimos. Guys, if you see me make a mistake, tell me, right? Or you think I make a mistake, tell me. At least I'll double check it. All right. Number 10. So eight, there's a correction to eight, right? No sentimos. Um, number 10. Mi hermano está afeitándose. Now, what do you all notice about the pronoun here? It's not at the beginning or the others, except for the infinitive has it at the end, the present tense has it at the beginning. This present participle has it at the end, right? And we put in an accent to keep the stress on this syllable, which was the second to last syllable before we added in S-E, right? All right, so I'm changing it to yours. Instead of esta, I have to put estoy. And I have to get rid of mi hermano because then that wouldn't make sense. So estoy afeitando me. Right? Okay, mis amigos y yo, my friends and I. So what pronoun would that be? Right, nos, great. All right, so estamos sentando nos, right? Um, Sintando is the, part, the participle, the present participle. So, so Sintando knows this, we are no state, right? All right. Mis amigos están despidiendo usted. My friends are saying goodbye. And instead, we're going to change this to two, you. All right. So you, estoy estás. And then what is the pronoun? Despidiendo T, right? Right. Okay, any questions? If anybody is still confused, you need to tell me, please. All right. So in most tenses, I'm talking about, um, we're talking about where we put the reflexive pronouns. In most tenses, um, and I have here simple past on the list. Simple present is another one. Right? The simple present is like, I sit, I eat, uh, mira, 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 I look at, you look at, etc. Right? So simple present tense. What other tenses do you know? Imperfect, good. All right. Now, what makes this a simple tense? Probably that the verb just has the one part to it. So probably besides the ones in the past, there's also future, right, preterite. 
right? Um, probably also conditional could be considered a simple tense. It just as the one word it, as opposed to like present continuous, where you have the star plus the participle, right? So all of these tenses, the uh, oh um, one exception might be the perfect tense that has two parts, but it still counts. Um, it still appears on this list. Perfect tense. So if you've done perfect tense, then this applies here too, right? Um, so in most tenses, like this list that I've just given you, the reflexive pronouns are placed before the verb, right? So I shower before I go to school. How do we say that? The shower is Ducharsi. Come, guys, how do we say I shower before I go to school? We conjugate do char. So we say do cho, I shower. And we say me do cho, right? It should be a common day. Antes de ir a la escuela. Antes de I go to school. Well, um, before going to school here. Uh, la escuela or al colegio, if you prefer that, right? All right. Um, me do yo antes de ir a la escuela, right? Um, I I purposefully put the English first so I could ask you how do you say it in Spanish, and you could formulate a response and send it, right? When exam time rolls around next term and it's term after for some people, you want to have practiced going from English to Spanish, right? It will get easier the more you do it. So try. Anyhow, we're seeing um what we're really looking for is where the pronoun is and we're seeing it in front of the verb, right? All right, next one. Miguel gets up at five in the morning. Miguel se levantas a las cinco de la mañana. De la madrugada, right? All right, so say in front of the verb, um, levantas, right? All right. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, so anybody who needs to write, you can do so now. One example would be fine if you don't want to take only two. Right, okay, so now we're going to look at some instances where the pronoun does not appear before the verb. In fact, it appears after the verb, right? All right, and the three in particular that I want you to pay attention to are positive commands. When you're telling someone to do something, right, whether formal or informal, with the infinitive, so there'll probably be two verbs and one will be in the infinitive. So positive commands, formal and informal, right? With the infinitive, so it's usually two verbs and one is the infinitive. Think of the infinitive as um, the verb at rest. Neutral position, right? It hasn't changed. Okay, and then with the present participle. But you'll, um, hmm, all right, so the, the, the note is on the right-hand side. This is just to draw your attention to these three things, right? So here is the note. If you want, you could call it exceptions. If you want a heading after the one that you just had, perhaps the heading um, 
it could be exceptions. So we could say exceptions in placement of reflexive pronouns, right? And these are the three situations we're looking at. So when the infinitive or present participle is used, the reflexive pronouns uh, may say, say, no, uh, say, are placed after the verb, in which case they are joined at the end of the verb. Um, just give me one second. Let me just write. Okay, so the, the, the command point is done separately. Right, so um, when the infinitive or the present participle is used, and when would the present participle be used? Um, if you had a verb, if you want to say what you're doing right this minute, you want to convey that you're doing it right now, right? Because you could say, okay, so if you're saying studying, you could say a studio, I study. But that could mean you study all the time. It could mean you're studying right now. It could mean you study in general. But if you want to tell somebody you're doing something right now, what do you do? You use a star plus the present participle. This is called the progressive tense because it's going on right now. Right? Um, estoy estudiando. Right? So here we have the present participle. So that's one situation. Um, unfortunately, I have my infinitive example first. So the infinitive would be when we have two verbs, I'm going to study. Right? I am going to study. None of this you have to write as yet, just what appears typed up you could write, right? So this to study is the infinitive, right? All right. Um, no, studio is not a reflexive verb, um, but to get up is a reflexive verb. What is to get up? Levantarse, right? So I am going to get up. This is the infinitive. And it's the infinitive of a reflexive verb, right? So when we write the infinitive of a reflexive verb, we write it with the say at the end if it's not attached to a person. In this sentence, it's attached to I. It's attached to you, right? So I have to put me. So voy a levantarme a la sochu. Because I am the person that's going to get up at age. Right? Does that example make sense? Is anybody confused? All right, the next example has um a present participle, right? So I am sitting, she is sitting on the sofa. So is sitting, she's doing it right now. So this is going to be a star plus the present participle. Right? Ella está, she is, sitting, sentando. And um, sentarse is reflexive, right? So when we conjugate it, we have to account for the reflexive pronoun. Right, Centaur, say reflexive. So we have to account for that pronoun. Ella gets say, right? But the rule is in Spanish, um, instead of say, well, actually, you could say the other way, you know. Um, say está sentando. You could say that. You could say ella se está sentando. It exists. I guess it's just more popular. Or teachers want you to know that you add the um pronoun at the end. So you add say at the end of the present participle. Right? And then before this word was sentando, say it was sentando. Okay? And the stress fell naturally on this piece of the verb. Because it's the second to last syllable. The word ends in a vowel. So the here is where the stress fell, right? So to keep the stress there, so it doesn't move to the O, we say, we put an accent. We say sentando, say. Right?
All right, so I'm going to clear away the little scribbles on the left-hand side. So it's clear to everybody what they need to write, right? Okay, and you can also note this piece here. Add an accent to preserve the stress, right? All right. So I'm giving you some time and then we will look at what happens with positive commands. Okay, so then uh, uh, let me put it up for those who are ready, but you will have the whole screen so you could still continue and finish, right? All right, so in affirmative commands, so the piece of the word that's hidden here is the stress. Right, in affirmative commands, so that means you're telling somebody to do something, it's also called positive commands, right? So you're saying, go there, sit here, as opposed to do not go there, do not sit here, right? So in affirmative commands, reflexive pronouns, may te, say, no, say, are placed after and joined to the end of the verb, right? Wash your hands, girls. Lavense las manos, chicas. So the same thing um, with the syllable, the accent, sorry, is placed here to preserve the stress, right? Now, um, I'm being kind of glib. I'm just saying that. I'm not giving you examples. I'm not going over the rules of pronunciation right now, but we will probably next week though, right? Um, all right, so lavense las manos, chicas. So this person is being polite. They are using the subjunctive. Um, it's a formal command. In a formal command, we use subjunctive. So we say laving, right? But then la lavarse is reflexive. So we have to add se, right? And the stress would have fallen on the E. So we put it back there. We put an accent there to preserve it, right? All right. So this is an example of a formal command. which you could tell because um, the A from lavar is changed to an E. I don't know. So if you've learned formal commands, perhaps your teacher used, explained it through subjunctive, or perhaps your teacher just told you if, it, if it's an E, change it to an A. If it's an A, change it to an E. All right. Go to sleep early, my son. So my son, so we know this will be informal. All right. Duermete temprano mi hijo, right? From dormir, dormir se, right? Um, dormir is to sleep, go to sleep, dormir se, right? Um, so duerme, because it's also stem changing. Um, so if we conjugate dormir uh, in present tense, it would be duermo, duermes, Duarme. And an informal command is a third person singular for two, right? An informal two command is a third person singular. So this one is informal. All right. So if if you haven't done commands yet and I'm confusing you, but I say this is formal, this is informal, this is where it came from, this is how you form it. Just um for right now, just retain that if it's a command, the Reflexive pronoun goes at the end. Okay. So I have one more. Yes. Put on your shoes and let's go. From ponerse to put on. Ponte los zapatos y vamos. Right? Or vamos. Um, so this also is informal. All right. Questions. What questions do you want to ask? Right, so you're listing out for a date and a place when and where was the article published. And generally, the questions are going to follow the order that the information will come in, right? Order of the questions. 
So you'll hear the answer for question one first, then question two, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what event does the news story relate? Who are the two main people involved? Where did the young man in the story wait for the young lady? Who accompanied the young lady? What was the young lady wearing? What did the guests do after the ceremony? Right. Now, are there any strategies you all use for listening comprehension already? Uh, would anybody like to share their strategy? What strategy do you use? Okay, so one strategy should definitely be read the questions before um, you hear the passage, if you can, right? Once you can see the question, read it. Okay. Um, another strategy should be, or could be, um, write down what you're hearing. So at certain points in the actual CSEC exam, your teacher will be reading so slowly that you can jot down notes, even though you cannot jot down, um, the, you can't select the answers, right? Okay, good. So you're, some of you all, let me see what you all are saying. Um, answers for the first five questions are usually first passage. So you listen to the passage and listen to it for the answers to the questions, right? If you don't know certain words, try to make sense of it without the, uh, using the other words that you do know, yes. Very good strategies, right? All right, ready? So if I were you, I would keep my pencil in hand next to a piece of scrap paper. And as I hear things, I would jot them down, right? I would also focus my attention on one, my eyes on one point. So I'm not distracted by other things that are happening. And I could just concentrate on what I'm hearing, right? Um, if you care better with your eyes closed, you can do that too. All right, here we go. Buenos Aires, el 2 de julio, 1991. Ayer se celebró en la iglesia de Santa Elena la boda del joven Jorge Juan Fernández Alcantara con la bella señorita Isabel Garcés de la Oz. Muchos invitados asistieron a la ceremonia. La novia llegó acompañada de sus padres, el señor Leonardo Garcés de la Oz, y la señora Paulina de Garces de la Oz. El novio esperaba a la novia en la iglesia. Ella vestía un hermoso vestido blanco. Al finalizar la ceremonia, Los invitados felicitaron a los recién casados. Viva la novia, viva el novio, muchas felicidades. All right, so we're going again. I'm going to read peace and stop. And then I'll, I'll give you two pieces and then um, I'll read it, read the second piece again, right? I'll give you two minutes, not two pieces, sorry. Then I'll read the second piece again. Okay. <clears throat> Buenos Aires, el 2 de julio, mil noventa, um, sorry, mil novecientos noventa y uno. Ayer se celebró 
en la iglesia de Santa Elena. La boda del joven Jorge Juan Fernández Alcantara con la bella señorita Isabel Garcés de la Oz. Muchos invitados asistieron a la ceremonia. ceremonia. La novia llegó acompañada de sus padres, el señor Leonardo Garcés de la Oz y la señora Paulina de Garcés de la Oz. El novio esperaba a la novia en la iglesia. Okay, that's the first half. I'm going to give it two minutes. El novio esperaba a la novia en la iglesia. Ella vestía un hermoso vestido blanco. Al finalizar la ceremonia, los invitados felicitaron a los recién casados. Viva la novia. Viva el novio. Muchas felicidades. Okay, so um, the, first, the first sentence, or the first thing I said, Buenos Aires, el 2 de julio, mil novecientos, Noventa y uno. Okay, and then number seven, um, give us a little run for money. So let's see. Al finalizar la ceremonia, los invitados felicitaron a los recién casados. Viva la novia. Viva el novio. Muchas felicidades. So you can take an educated guess if you can make out any of those words. Okay, any other piece anybody wants me to read over? Any question anybody didn't get? And I'll I'll read over that piece for you. Okay, well, that's correct. We're going to correct it. And then on the next slide, I have the passage so you could look at it yourself, right? All right, so let's correct here. When and where was this article published? What did you hear? You heard Buenos Aires. I hope nobody just automatically assumed that was like good morning or good evening, right? Buenos Aires. Where is Buenos Aires? And you heard El Dos de Julio. Very good. Second of July, right? And you heard the year. Mil novecientos noventa y uno. Everybody in this class has done numbers up to a million. Anybody has not done numbers up to a million? What number have you gone up to? Until 100? Okay. All right. So, okay. All right. Good. Okay. So, we'll review the bigger numbers, right? All right. Um, What event does the news story relate? What is taking place in this article? What is the article talking about? A wedding, una boda. Very good. Right? Who are the two people involved? Now, honestly, I felt like the where we asked for names, that might be... Because Jorge has like four names. Right. So, Jorge, if anybody um got this full name, I will pay you money. Juan Fernandez Alcantara. Right? I am I mean, any any piece of this that you got is a win. So once you got a piece of the name, good job. 
And then Isabel Garces de la Oz. Now, um, H O Z O G Z. So in reality, you know, this this will be a multiple choice option for you. You know, you'll just choose from the names they give you who the person is, right? Um, just we're not doing it that way right now. All right. Where did the young man in the story wait for the young lady? El novio esperaba a la novia en la iglesia. So the best answer is in the church. Um, but if you told me in the ceremony, I think you would get credit for that. Yeah. Who accompanied the young lady? All right. So this one, this answer actually came earlier than that. Um, her father, yes, and her mother, sus padres. So, la novia llegó acompañada de sus padres. So, her parents. All right. What was, it, what was she wearing? A white wedding dress. Yes, great. A beautiful white dress is what the, the um, passage says. Un hermoso vestido blanco. Right? What did the guests do after the ceremony? Anybody got this? What did we get? So what words did you hear? Did you hear felicidades? Did you hear vivo? So felicidades. Did you hear um vivo el novio? Vivo la novia. Right. Yeah, yes, yeah, Summer, you are correct. They congratulated them. They congratulated the bride and the groom. All right, anything anybody wants to ask or say, I can give you a minute to take down any additional answers you need to. Right, ayer se celebró en la iglesia de Santa Elena, Elena, sorry, la boda del joven Jorge Juan Fernández Alcántara. Right, con la bella señorita Isabel Garcés de la Oz. Right. La novia llegó, le llevé a Santa Nigo, right, acompañada de sus padres. El señor Leonardo and then Senora Paulina, right? The boyfriend, the fiance was waiting in the church. She was dressed in un hermoso vestido blanco. Al finalizar la ceremonia, um, los, invitar, los invitados felicitaron, right? Muchas felicidades. Cool, everybody sees everything. Okay, um, let's, so we, we have time for one more grammar thing. Okay, so we want to just uh, review what AL plus the infinitive means in Spanish. And what it means is, it translates in English to on, when, upon doing something in English, right? So first take down the heading. We'll take our time, it's the last slide we'll go through tonight so we'll take our time right see a little zombie here waiting for us all right so there's my little zombie friend in front of a house now right is that house the concert al regresar a mi casa vi un zombie un zombie All right, sorry, I'm a real life zombie in here. All right, so I'll regress out of my casa on returning home, right? Or upon returning home, I saw a zombie. And now the zombie catcher is coming for him.
All right, the next one came up one time, right? Now you don't need to take down all of the examples. Let's just, you could take down a couple and instead of a zombie, you know, you could put a person, you could put my friend, you could put something else if that's not your thing. All right, Alver el zombie, oh, Alver al zombie, sorry. We are la casa de mi vecino, vecino, right? All right, what is we? What would you do if you saw a zombie? So I need to have an accent on, on that I and E, right? All right, so on seeing a zombie, I fled to my neighbor's house, right? Okay, so we comes from weird, which honestly is a word I learned long ago in like secondary school and thought I would never need to use. But now look, we're using it to flee. All right. Okay, next one. And the others are just examples. So if you feel like you understand it and you have enough examples written down, just let the other ones entertain you then, right? All right, so this is my neighbor's house here. <gasps> what? It's a ghost. Al llegar a la casa, me encuentro una fantasma. Right? So when I arrived at the house, well, let me go with on arriving. On arriving at the house, I met, so see another reflexive verb, Encontrarse to meet, right? I met a ghost. This ghost looks kind of friendly, right? On seeing the ghost, I fled again. Well, I went away again. I left again, right? So upon seeing the ghost, What do you think happens to this person? All right, last one. Al darme cuenta de que era Halloween, me sentí tonto. I felt silly. All right, so two reflexive verbs here. All right, so on realizing that it was Halloween, I felt silly, right? So one reflexive verb, darse cuenta de, to, re to realize, Right? And then um sentirse, but in this case, sentirse tonto to feel silly. All right, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to finish noting examples. If you have any questions, please say, right? Since you're, this should be say, not so. Since you're say,
Right, so the comprehension you will answer in English. Um, it would be nice if you use full sentences. And just take a clear picture and send it on WhatsApp. If you didn't complete the first homework assignment, which was kind of like an introduction, right? Then you still have time. Um, please try and do it. If you had to choose between the two, that one is more important, right? Well, I guess they're both kind of important. As to when you have to send it by, just try and send it before this one. Just try and send this one before next class, right? And so we'll also post a link on the website in case um, you can't get it from here. All right. Any questions? Everybody understands what the homework is. Uh, the other thing you need to do, of course, is to study the rules for reflexive verbs that we talked about. And then next week, we'll do more practice with placing where to place the reflexive pronoun. Right? All right. Well, once you are done with this slide, taking on the examples. If you have no questions, you understand what has to be done, then you're free to go enjoy the rest of your night and the rest of your week, right?